Welcome everybody again to another episode of the Idea Me Show, the show that profiles the humans behind really big ideas that have shaped our world or inspiring the future and future creators and for all those that like really great stories. I'm Ira Pastor, your life sciences ambassador along for this journey. So um, throughout the, the 20th century, uh, natural products, uh, primarily those from bacteria, fungal communities, and especially those from the plant kingdom, uh, have formed the basis for a majority of all pharmaceuticals, biologics, consumer healthcare products used by people around the world, generating literally trillions of dollars of wealth over the last century. However, many scientists believe we've really only touched the surface um, with what the botanical world and its unique ways to manufacture complex natural phytochemical cocktails with novel bioactivities have to teach us. And additionally, while many of us keep our pharmaceuticals or our dietary supplements or so forth tucked away in our medicine cabinets, we tend to forget about that other cabinet of health that we all have in our homes, which is really a treasure trove of phytochemical possibilities, and that is our spice cabinet. Um, I'm truly honored today to be joined by Dr. Hamed Faridi, uh, Chief Science Officer Emeritus at the McCormick Company, uh, the world's largest spice company headquartered here in the United States in Maryland, uh, which employs close to 12,000 people, which manufactures, markets, distributes spices, mixes condiments, other flavoring products for industry, restaurants, institutional home markets. Dr. Fried is a, a renowned food industry leader. Uh, he's led a team of over 500 scientists at McCormick responsible for thought leadership, scientific research, product development, health and wellness research, sustainability, all to support the businesses of McCormick. And he's been referred to as the voice of science for the company, advises the CEO, senior executives on a variety of strategic initiatives, technology investments, M&A, and so forth. Uh, and under his leadership, McCormick's R&D has been transformed over the years and is rated uh, by both investors and customers as was one of the most innovative throughout the industry. Uh, his science-based approach to so-called flavorful healthy eating is recognized as a breakthrough platform for improving public health. Uh, his vision led to the development of McCormick Science Institute, which is a research-driven organization to advance the scientific understanding and health benefits of spices and herbs. Uh, this was a program that was a close part partnership between USDA, Department of Health and Human Services, and the White House uh, for the implementation of 2015-2020 uh, dietary guidelines for Americans. Uh, in 2013, he created a, a fascinating partnership with the IBM Corporation, uh, creating an AI platform for both food and flavor product development, uh, with potential to change the course of how sort of the heating experience uh, for consumers uh, is, has been done over the last 40 years, integrating a variety of data from sensory, culinary, chemistry, and scientific data at McCormick. Uh, he's published numerous books, scientific articles, has been lecturing at conferences in 22 countries, um, elected to serve as the president of the American Association of Cereal Chemists and the Flavor and Extract Manufacturers Association, uh, has been given numerous awards. He's on the board of trustees at Maryland University. Uh, he served on the board of directors of St. Joseph Medical Center in Towson, Maryland, uh, and his, you know, both his master's and PhD were from in food science from Kansas State University, MBA for Larry Dickinson. I could read, I could read, continue the next half hour through his bio, but let's just uh, get right into this. Dr. Ahmed Vari, thank you for taking the time out of your schedule uh, to, to join us today on the show. Thank you, Ira, for inviting me. It's a great honor to be here, to, to be with you. Oh, thank you. The, honor, the honor is here, definitely. Um, you know, Dr. Reed, we, we typically uh, start off the show by, by giving our guests the floor to, to, for a little while just to talk about themselves. If you could sort of take us through sort of the early days, you know, how you developed an interest in, in science and in food science and medicinal plants, and, and just a little bit of your journey to really the epicenter uh, of, of the largest corporation in the world in terms of merging health and wellness with uh, natural products, herbs, food, uh, the, the whole story is, is really fascinating. We'd love to hear it. I was born in Iran mm -hmm. and uh, I grew up there. Uh, and then when during the high school years, I actually attended a high school that was founded by an American Jesuit missionary. And uh, so when I was there, uh, he had already passed away. So he was, but his bus was at the, at the entrance of the, the, of the building and was highly revered person, Dr. Samuel Jordan. Okay. And uh, one of the things that was, uh, it, it, it just was fascinating is that uh, that shaped the future of my, my career and technically my destiny 
was when I was on the 10th grade, I became uh, number one scholastically in my, in my, in my classroom. And then uh, there was a, in the commencement event, the uh, Secretary of Education, his name was Dr. Khan Lari, he gave me a book on medicinal herbs of Iran. And uh, it was fascinating. And that, mm -hmm. I, I, when I read that, I was fascinated by it, that there is so much in our own backyard that uh, we can use for our health and wellness in a country that was struggling with so many different nutritional related issues. Mm -hmm. And that became my, my uh, destiny. And through all my life and my career, I have done my best to find out a way to, to, uh, to improve public health. And uh, joining McCormick is really, and I always talk about it, that it was my mission in life should sure. not have been completed without joining McCormick mm -hmm. because it really gave me the platform that is unprecedented. First of all, the product line is exactly what I had in mind, and I've always benefited and enjoyed consuming it. Secondly, when we, you know, when 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 I approached McCormick Management in 2006, that we want to establish an institute independent of the company to look at the health benefit of spice and herbs and also flavorful healthy eating. At the time, and even to this day, there is hardly any company or a, a private company who funds such a research as a multi-million dollar, multi-year commitment. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but the thoughtful leadership of, of McCormick and Company gave me the green light. So we established the institute, and which is led by a, a Blue Ribbon Scientific Advisory Council and a, a, a renowned nutritionist as their executive director. And so in the last 14 years, we have, we have conducted over 40 clinical trials at leading universities in, in US and in Europe mm -hmm. and, and also Canada. And, and the, the fascinating part of it was when I started looking at these issues, these opportunities, I realized that most of the research has been done in the past, has been on either with experimental animals or has been done on a pharmaceutical level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It does not have any uh, application to the everyday consumer. Sure. So what we did, we said from day one, we only work at the culinary level of spice and herb consumption that an average consumer would use. And so we look at it from standpoint of these are independent from McCormick. One of the conditions for, for all these universities, which it surprised them actually, they were first, they couldn't believe what I was telling them that we have no interest whatsoever in intellectual property. Hmm. It's all theirs. The only, the only commitment that they have to make is to publish it in a referee journal. Okay. So has been has worked in a sense, instead of, you know, that's one of the things that university professors always talk about is that every time they want to have a, uh, a you know, a, a contract with a, with, a, with, a, with a company, there are a couple of things. One of them is they are always worried if somebody, in, in, you know, interfere with their work. Secondly, sure. Red tape or the NDAs that needs to be signed. Our project usually is a bit of a handshake, mm -hmm. so, and I agree because we give the money as as a, as a gift, and has been a great blessing for us for both. I mean, we have enhanced. If you look at the citations on health benefit of spices and herbs on Google or, or PubMed, has significantly oh, yeah. in the last fourteen years, and thanks to the principal investigators that we have that have done the work and published it extensively. So it was really my destiny. And even today with everything that you hear about the unfortunate event of, of the pandemic and COVID-19 and all of these things, it comes back to this that, you know, very simple practices of flavorful, healthy eating, mm -hmm. just eat healthy and use uh, fruits and vegetables and spice and herbs, which uh, we have one of our principal investigators at UCLA, his name Dr. Heber, and Dr. Heber always explains spice and herb as a concentrated vegetables. It's something that is good for them. So uh, uh, that is, that is, I feel very, very honored and very blessed to have the opportunity to do that. 
Outstanding, outstanding, definitely. And, and you, you bring up some very, uh, a lot of very interesting points. And one of the ones that sort of uh, hits home most for me, because you know, I, I grew up in the, in the traditional pharmaceutical industry, but I was fortunate enough to have sort of uh, phytomedicinal experience as well. And you know, when we look back at uh, the long history of medicinal plants, which you know, goes back thousands of years to the Sumerians and so forth, even before that in the archaeological record. But, you know, entering into sort of the, the end of the, the 19th century when that, that Bayer company came along and decided to, to, to synthesize aspirin and start making things synthetically, we sort of lost a little bit in the pharmaceutical industry that connection between sort of this other dimension, as I refer to it, sort of this combinatorial capability of plants. You know, plants don't make, you know, one thing. They make these cocktails of bioactive substances that you know do lots of things and that's why they you know survive so very long on this planet even though they're get the same diseases and everything that we do talk a little bit if you would about sort of this combinatorial component of your research and how you know you're not dealing with a single drug you're not trying to isolate that one moiety that a drug company would but really looking at these these cocktails let's say that may have you know really multiple uh, possible bioactivities. Um, I think that's a very ex important and exciting thing that we can take advantage of with culinary herbs and spices. As you know that uh, spice and herbs and their extracts are really the father of modern pharmacology. Mm -hmm. It really started, and spice and herbs, if you look at the history of spice over the last three, 4,000 years, it, uh, at the beginning, it was really mainly for their medicinal purpose. And then the culinary, uh, took over because at the, at the, well, the last 100 years, because a variety of reasons that you mentioned, that, that pharmaceuticals started, came, developed a series of wonderful drugs that it really lessened the value of spice and herb. And now, with, a, with a more attention to natural, uh, uh, natural ways of, of healing ourselves, mm -hmm. I think spice and herbs are, are getting in a, in a place that they deserve. But in general, I just want to give you a, a, just a two, two minute or one sure, minute. Please. This, that none of these things, none of these phytochemicals or things that are available in the, in, the, uh, in the herbs and spices and plants, none of them are for the benefit of humans. It was not created. It was right. evolved in their own defense. That's why, for example, like if you, if you look at the you know, egg protein or, or, or even a... Um, uh, uh, an apple or a, uh, the, the, the things that are close to the seed is for the nurturing the seed. So they are mostly very small molecules, very susceptible to heat and, and, and all kinds of you know, uh, physical activities because they are small so the seed can absorb it. Mm -hmm. Most of the things, the phytochemicals that we are uh, talking about, they are all for as a defense mechanism against intruders so technically the closer you get to the tropics to the equator mm -hmm. there are the, the weather is warmer and uh, and then the number of other things that in that can can intrude and can invade a plant mm -hmm. increasing they have developed these more and more complicated mm -hmm. chemicals to fight the enemy and sometimes, even when they are, you know, they, if they are in the soil, like for example, uh, turmeric, that they develop even more complicated system because not only they are in the tropics, they are also in the soil. So they have to, def to fend off the intruders even in a greater extent. So these phytochemicals usually are, usually are more, uh, more complicated, larger molecules. Mm -hmm. It has a longer shelf life and like, you know, better tendency to fight the things that it really also attack human body. And from that standpoint, it really has medicinal impact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, excellent points, excellent points. Um, the, you know, yeah, you, you, you created this um, you know, fascinating partnership with uh, IBM back in, um, I think it was 2013 or so, uh, focused on artificial intelligence and sort of building, you know, you have these decades worth of information uh, in your research at McCormick. Um, and you know, now you're, you know, as we, we hear a lot about artificial intelligence nowadays, obviously in the healthcare industry, you know, looking at AI to divine you know, different products, uh, drugs, maybe model proteins and so forth. In your particular case, 
Um, it, the focus is on coming up with new flavor combinations uh, and so forth. And, and I, I read an article recently that potentially if you were going to use it to, to help design all your products, I think at the end of this year. Um, I, I seem to remember a couple, I, I, maybe a decade or so, I was, I was talking to you about some of these uh, you know, flavorists and, 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 and uh, sort of perfume people that exist in the industry that are naturally really good at <laughs> smelling and tasting things that you, I guess you, <laughs> I wouldn't. Uh, talk a little bit about sort of uh, artificial intelligence, some of this program, and then also sort of um, how good, I guess, this technology is at, I guess, most mimicking the human tongue and, and the and smells smell. and, and all that other stuff. <laughs> Great pleasure. First of all, I, I, I heard about it at the, uh, you know, because when I commute, you know, although my car has all kind of, a, you know, uh, which most of the cars, uh, of, uh, you know, all kind of uh, channels, I only listen to NPR. Mm -hmm. so it was on the, uh, a gentleman, by, I think he's retired now, his name was Robert Siegel. Okay. On NPR. So he was interviewing a, a scientist, Dr. Lav Vernishki at, at IBM Watson Center about they call it five in five, about the five senses and the five years that the IBM is developing technologies to, to take advantage and, and, and for, the, for the people to use those five senses better. And one of them was about flavor. It was fascinating to me. So I started contacting with them right away and it, take, it took some time to, to, to develop these partnerships, but it has been a, an, an amazing partnership because they are really, they put their some of the finest uh, scientists in, into this partnership and we did the same thing. We really picked some of the best flavorists and scientists that we have on the project and has been amazing actually. The way that it, it, it really works is that we know that that the computer cannot taste, cannot smell, mm -hmm. and more importantly cannot feel. So the experience, for example, if there's a, if, they, if you're uh, having a, a party and there is a wedding and so forth and you want to have a piece of cake that's experience it's not only you're eating a piece of cake is or a champagne is so computer cannot sense that but what computer can do develop a series of algorithm to take a look at the kind of like a each piece at one time and in the future it will really will be linked into the all the suppliers of all the flavors and ingredients around the world so Really, is a, would be connected to a shopping mall that has tens of thousands or more ingredients in it. So what it does, it really looks at several different versions. One of them is substitution. Mm -hmm. One of the combination, for example, like in they look at the onions. Okay. Then, so it says they look at all these hundreds of thousands. We have already fed about four hundred thousand formulations to the system. Mm -hmm. So they look at it and says whenever uh, you know, uh, garlic was used, onion was used as well. And they create these ratios and call golden ratios that, and hmm. then depending on the medium, the seasoning or flavor or the condiment, they develop a set of understanding that usually these are the combinations that work. And they go to the third ingredient and then the fourth ingredient all the way up. So, and then also with the substitution that what can substitute what the other? Because machine doesn't understand product, they only right. do it with numbers. So to them, every flavor or every ingredient is a seven or eight digit number. But when they look at these things, they find out that when when some something was used in addition in 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 the replacing other, it worked or didn't work. Because the the, the competitive advantage that we have is that we have about. You know, McCormick has always been committed to science from, we are the first actually American CPG and, and food and flavor company that established R&D as a separate function in 1951. Okay. So, so we have developed it, we have this know-how of uh, sensory that, so we have an enormous amount of data on liking. So what, what substitute, what, is that increased liking or, or, or decreased liking? So by, it's not only one algorithm, but dozens and dozens of algorithms, very super complicated, high-speed computer, but it really analyzes and it comes up with the suggestions mm -hmm. that is fascinating. And that's one of the things that it, it really helped us with our, with our management team is that when, when we asked a couple of times about create a product and everybody was surprised that it could do it so much faster 
mm. any human being possible because sure, you have sure. access to enormous amount of data. So when I started my career in 1970s, when, when I, for example, in the USDA and also I work at Washington State University, we still had, you know, beam balances in the lab mm -hmm. and slide rules and all those computer, you know, that, that uh, you know, those prints that we have with the, with the punch card and so forth. <laughs> Today, it's, it's un 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 you know, unthinkable that someone would work for a company that uses beam balance. I think 10, 20 years from now, I, I think it would be almost unthinkable for a, a new, from graduate from, from college, to accept a job for a company that does not work with artificial intelligence for doing the, the product because it because it's not is never going to replace the, the product developer. Sure, it sure. Be its inspiration partner and has been enormously helpful for us. And uh, you know this is this, this is something that it really cha game changer not only for McCormick for 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 the entire industry. And we are very honored and and. Uh, you know, very blessed that we were, we, we were the pioneer of this. But I'm sure that so many other companies are involved and so many other people are doing it. So the more they do, the better, actually, for the entire industry. Absolutely. 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 What, um, is, moving on um, from sort of flavoring now, or, or, or actually staying on that theme for a moment, I, you know, um, I read a, a quote of yours recently uh, that you basically said, you know, if, it, if it's not delicious, you can't force people to eat it. Uh, and by making it delicious, you have a chance to impact uh, behaviors. And of course, you know, I um, occasionally I'll go to the Centers for Disease Control and look at some of these big issues with regard to smoking and drinking, but of course, obesity and some of the numbers, despite how healthy we suppose we are all being, the, the numbers are a little shocking still with how we're eating. And, you know, you've been a, a very big proponent of, of healthy eating and then obviously the connection between that and flavoring and spices and herbs. Uh, talk a little bit about this because I think this is a, um, a major problem in terms of I don't know what percent of you know the United States population now is obese, but um, this is this is a major driver of health problems and chronic disease. Talk a little bit, if you would, about some of your visions for uh, innovative flavoring technologies and and these tools, and ultimately changing behavior, as you say, with flavor. Uh, you know, there are data in the literature, but I think is my personal belief mm -hmm. that. People, when eat bland food, they eat more to get to the level of satiety from, from, from flavor. If they feel better than they are eating. So the, 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 the more spicy and herby you know, that the product is, the more flavorful it is, technically people would, would get to that stage earlier. So they may not need to eat as much. And and also, it, it is it really the, and we have done a lot of work on that and extensively published by our principal investigators that a diet that is rich in spice and herbs, you, it can really replace part of salt and fat and sugar. So by replacing some of that, like a thirty percent or forty percent of the fat in the in the product, with and and replace it with with spice and herb that technically have no calorie whatsoever, it's all natural, and also it's good for you, it really helps the, the average consumer do not to be better. So I'm a firm believer that the most striking public health initiative or the biggest program, they have to start in our own kitchen. Mm -hmm. If we don't do it in our own kitchen, it will never work. And the way that we do it in our kitchen is to learn how to do things to, to, to use you know, these are the very low cost per use product that with a small amount, you can help with reducing salt and fat and sugar in the diet. It's so simple. Sure. So it's just even there are not, you don't need even, if you go to McCormick.com or there are other, many other uh, websites, there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of recipes mm -hmm. based that, that help average consumer to eat healthier, and that is something that we all, you know, even even the environment today, that everything. That if you say the government is just eat healthy, mm -hmm. making the right thing, and 
And so spice and herb uh, and flavor for healthy eating is designed for all season, basically, regardless of what's going on. This makes sense. Yep. And that is something that we have proven it by science. This has been shown uh, repeatedly in different universities throughout the the world that it really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, continue along that line of thought with regard to the, the principle of substitution. You know, early on when uh, we were starting out, you know, you mentioned the, the current situation we all find ourselves in with uh, regard to coronavirus. Um, obviously, you know, uh, one thing that medicinal plants, aside from a lot of their other therapeutic benefits, uh, are, are known to have are these very uh, potent uh, combinatorial uh, antimicrobial activities. Do you see um, the movement in the industry? Uh, in addition to, to what you were just mentioning, uh, to potentially more of this in terms of the preservation and, and, and prevention of uh, mold growth and, 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 and so forth, which you know, also require salt and uh, some of these other uh, ingredients that we may not want as much of in our products. You see a, sort of a, a place for that more in the future of, uh, of bioactive herbs and spices. Well, I think that you know, there are several known ones that it has been used for, for for decades. Oldberry has been used for, for preservation for several decades now, it's not new. And in the, it also, there has been a lot of literature about effects of black pepper in preservation of meat. So, but, so there, are, there are literature there and that, that we have at the at, at former Science Institute, we have never sponsored a project on, 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 on preservation and so forth. Mm. But the literature, because these these phytochemicals, they, they, they are, they have pot potency to do all of those things. Now, mm -hmm. finding the right combination to give not only the preservation, this at the same time, the taste and flavor is, is a challenge that food scientists need to deal with. But there, there's definitely, there is that potential there. Excellent. Excellent. Um, one, of the, one other question I wanted to hit in terms of you know, the various areas that you oversee um, is sustainability. Uh, you are the you know, a, a, a Fortune 1000 company, largest spice and herb producer in the world. Um, talk just a little bit, I, I, I don't know too much about the dynamic. I, I know where potatoes and tomatoes and things like that are grown, but in regard to um, the, the farming of, of, of these spices, um, in this sort of 2020 era of, of being concerned about the environment and uh, changes and so forth and sustainability being such a hot topic. Any important things on that front that you'd like to talk about? Uh, because these are, in some cases, quite valuable crops in comparison to more, um, you know, sort of the starches and what have you. Um, anything exciting going on on the sustainability front that you might want to talk about? Sure. I think that if you look at the history of McCormick, we have, uh, we started being a sustainable company when neither we talked about sustainability nor anybody else. We did it because we felt that this is the right thing to do that, for example, when you, when, you know, this was something that when you work or, or have a business in any, any community, you have a responsibility, more of a responsibility to help that community. So we started having even, for example, like medical centers, things in the, in the in the in the all different part of the world in mm -hmm. the 60s and 70s and so forth. But however, in the in, if you look at the uh, the literature today, we have been named the last three or four years every year the most sustainable food company in the world actually by Corporate Night, and we received the, at least in the last three years awards at the at the Davos Economic Forum for that. So, and when we are in the CPG. We have always been, and we have what we call a PLP, uh, purpose left performance, that by 2025, we have a very, very ambitious program on sustainability. And one of them is about our, we call it five iconic ingredients that we have. So, that, that, so they would be, we have very, very you know, ambitious targets to not, that meet and exceed every aspect of the sustainable production in every location that we operate. So we have been, uh, uh, we have received several awards and we have recognized by World Bank and others about the, a company that leads in, in helping communities, not only communities to do better in any part of the world that we operate, also use the most modern practices to help to make products more sustainable and more friendly to earth. We wanna make sure that, you know, that this, this the, uh, the, 
the area that we, we operate would remain cultivable for generations to come. So that is, has been, that this is, it is on our DNA that, you know, that's what, when they started giving awards and recognitions, they named McCormick the number one because it has been on DNA for decades that we have to do. And also with energy, the same thing we have, you know, how to can minimize the use of fossil fuel energy and all of these things. We have always been on the, on the, on the top of the list of companies who really dedicated, dedicated without, without making too much noise about it. Really, mm -hmm. because it's the right thing to do. Absolutely. This is the company that, when I joined the company, uh, I asked, the first day I asked our, our CEO, I said, so, so what, what is the modus operandi, modus operandi here? He said, do the right thing. And that is, has been, you know, our guiding post for, for, for over 130 years. We always do our best to do the right thing. Outstanding. Um, one of the, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, I mean, the, uh, you know, obviously you've done, you've done so much throughout your career and, you know, I, I, um, I happened to go on, um, Amazon and, you know, pull up a list of some of the, the books that you were involved in, in writing and co-authoring, uh, during your career and specialized uh, titles like the, the science of cookie and cracker production and the fundamentals of dough rheology and the end uses of wheat. Um, when are you going to write a book about medical herbs? Because I think you have a treasure trove of, of knowledge there, but I didn't see one yet. Are, are you planning to produce one? You know, in this day and age, actually, uh, you know, the best thing to do, because today knowledge is it's so widespread that it really writing a book is almost too late. Okay. And you do it. So what we have done, for example, in 2015, we published a, 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 a proceeding of the, of the event that we had in Washington, D.C., in the Nutrition Today. So I think today, with the, what we are expanding at McCormick Science Institute, and there are you know, unlimited things, for example, like in the next couple of years, three years, we're going to focus on vitality, on longevity, on in, in, immune-boosting properties of, of spice and herbs. So is is so much information we are creating that writing a book is almost is disservice to that. To that. As yeah. much as I love to write, but I think is but what what we would put it on our website actually our website McCormickScience.com is as update almost updated every at least every once a week. So we get all the information for everybody to use because here's a good thing is is a is a, is, a, is a, we are in the cost in the in the zenith of taste and health. Mm -hmm. And now, if you look at it, and sustainability. So we are at the, this is it cannot get any more sweet spot that that is the envy of the industry to be at the zenith of taste, sustainability, and and uh, and and health. And that's where that's what spice and herb operate. And that is something that, as I said, it, I was extremely lucky to to join this magnificent company. And uh, and really, it was my destiny to work on this and take it to to make it global, make it to the everyday consumer, because at the end of the day, I really believe that this is an, the, one of the least costly and best ways to, you, you cannot guarantee in biological system, you cannot not guarantee anything. Mm -hmm. But you can do your best to really do your best to minimize your risk to, to outside invaders, such as bacteria or virus or anything else or sun ray or whatever that is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a, fasc it's a fascinating journey. It's just, uh, and uh, this is something that, you know, we are, there is no, the good thing about what, what, what we do, there is no end to it. So mm -hmm. this journey will continue. It will continue well beyond me and, and the pe people who will, uh, uh, you know, succeed me. This is something that will go for, for, for decades and that because you know, there's so much to discover and so Absolutely. much. Each, all, all these plants and spices and herbs are very complicated system. There are so many different things and we still haven't looked at all the synergies that may exist. Oh, yeah. Combining them. So it's just, is, 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 a, is a candy store for a scientist. Absolutely. I can only imagine. <laughs> Uh, you know, one final question while I have you, um, obviously, you know, had an amazing career, uh, met probably an infinite range of people, 
uh, fascinating people along the way. Uh, any specific people that you want to give a shout out to, highlight that, you know, uh, were there along your journey uh, that, that kept you on this path? You know, if it wasn't for them, you'd be doing something different today. Um, anyone, anyone specifically want to mention? I think the, 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 in addition to, uh, you know, my parents, I'm extremely blessed that 41 years ago I married the love of my life, my best friend, my mentor, my everything. So from that standpoint, and I have a son and two granddaughters that I adore. But aside on the, on the family thing, probably the one that more enormously helped me in the future was the person that I never met, actually Dr. Samuel Jordan, who in 1896, I believe, he graduated from Prince, he is a, actually, he's from, uh, was born in Hanover, Pennsylvania, just a few miles from where I live. Okay. So he went to Princeton, got a PhD in divinity, and 1896 went to Iran, at the time was called Persia, for, for, uh, for doing good. Mm-hmm. And uh, there is actually a website. He, he, crea- he created an environment for not one, not two, not five, but thousands of people, Iranian kids, to learn the, the, the most advanced sciences. But he also created an environment that it was beyond science. It's that you got to always do good. You got to always be organized. You have always to be disciplined. That's what even today, you know, not wearing ties is very difficult for me because of <laughs> his teaching that, you know, you got to be always, you know, very, very disciplined and make sure that don't walk fast. Don't, it was like a one strike out. It was, if you find you that you're smoking or even cursing, you didn't have a second chance. So it was a very, very, you know, it really helped me to be a very disciplined. Of course, there are many, many ways. I'm very, you know, very, Lucky to have magnificent mentors. One of them just passed away a few months ago, Dr. Gilbert Lavelle, who was the president, and he was a world-renowned person. And he really took, when I worked for him, he he really took very seriously uh, mentoring me as one of a a, a, a a thing for him. And I benefited, I enormously benefited from. I also be, uh, believe in reverse mentoring of the younger people. Who, mm-hmm. uh, they, they now I begin to because as, as I age. I need to find more reverse mentors to people who, <laughs> and their you know, teens and twenties and so forth. And they are the people now that they, they, they are a lot more you know, comfortable with science, a lot more comfortable with technology, a lot more you know, and much faster in finding information and, and also a lot more committed to, uh, to planet and to sustainability and good health. So I, I have a lot to learn. So I'm just so excited to learn from the new generation about the new thing. And I'll do my best also to mentor them and help them as much as I can in my way. Excellent, excellent, really fascinating. Um, it, it's been really you know, a wonderful time talking with you and hearing about this story. Um, for everybody that's gonna be watching on, on the, the YouTube channel or listening on the various podcast networks, we've been speaking with the uh, amazingly knowledgeable Dr. Ahmed Faridi, Chief Science Officer Emeritus at the McCormick Spice and Herb Company, uh, doing amazing things at the intersection of health, of flavor, of sustainability, uh, the voice of science for the company, leading the, the, the path forward and flavorful, healthy eating. Uh, Dr. Faridi, thank you for taking the time to come on the show. Thank you for doing what you've been doing for the last uh, many decades. And as we say, uh, moving the human story forward, the healthy human story forward. Um, you know, thank you for, for everything. And it's, it's been really eye-opening and a pleasure having you. Thank you very much for the opportunity.